This week's episode of Geek Access is brought to you by our patrons. We want to give a big shout out to those that are helping support the show. And thank you very much for all of your help. Did you say shit out? I did say shit out. Oh, damn it. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 26 of the Geek Access Podcast for January 11th, 2015. 26? <laughs> yeah, episode 26. Yeah, you weren't here for 25, dude. Fuck off, dude. It's okay. Yeah, where were you? <laughs> My back hurts. His dude. back hurts, so we couldn't sit down. <laughs> no, dude, I got a car accident, like, back in June, December. Well, well, I am joined by the usual culprits, Corey, and our returning host, Brandon. How's it going, guys? Great. I need to know what was the car accident like. Oh, dude, I was I was working. I got a car accident in the work truck. Well, how lame is that? At least did you get fucking like paid for it, right? Well, yeah. I have I didn't miss any work. My well, back is kind of irritated. They pay for your like. Did you go to the therapist or whatever? Uh, no, I'm still trying to get a doctor's appointment, but apparently no one's accepting patients right now. It's really difficult. Those cocks. Yeah, dude. Fucking flu season. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Well, even before that, there was like three weeks where Nate was busy with being dead, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like the holidays, so, you know. That's what it is, you know, you know. Glad, to be, glad, to, be, glad, glad to be back online and whatnot, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> good time, good time. Holidays. Everyone's, oh. everyone's, here, everyone's here to have fun, you know. How are your holidays? Good. We didn't get to hear those. Yeah, dude. Good times. Good times. Except for the car crash. That's, that's yeah. yeah. How, that was, how were that your was holidays? That December twenty second. Oh. Right so it was this. right before. It was so annoying. Right. But my fucking rental van is awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, engine rental yeah, van. Dude. Is it like yeah. raper van status? Like super? Big no, dude. It's a fucking twenty fifteen Dodge Promaster. What? I, I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> it I don't want to give awesome. it up. This coming week is like my last week with it. I'm bummed. It is Show phenomenal. Notes. Tag the car. Do it. Shout outs to Dodge. Shout outs to Dodge. Fuck you. Your transmissions are awful. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was pretty cool. I don't know if you saw. She got me like a full, full size map of the Game of Thrones universe in a Nice frame too that I've got. Oh yeah, I did now. see that. That's cool. Yeah, dude. That's the picture. That's awesome. Yeah, dude, I've got it in the living room now. It's pretty slick, and nasty. <laughs> Next step, she's got to get you the throne. But yeah, dude, I want the I want the fucking oh, yeah. thirty grand. I want the replica Iron Throne. How awesome would that? Be? We in there. <laughs> but we might. Ugh, my lease is up at the end of April. We might look to to move in around the because that point we'll have been together six months and YOLO, so YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. Hey man. Yeah, dude. Living with girls, dude. It's always a, it's always like it's playing pretty craps. Fun. Oh, it's actually funny. So after the first episode of Blizzard Hour, uh uh-huh. I hopped in their call and started talking to him and we so we were talking about how shitty we were at the beginning and still are, but beyond the besides the point. And yeah, so I, I know, dude. And uh, I went back and rewatched a lot of the old episodes, just like skimming through the YouTube videos. Yeah. And you could you could tell, when, like in the interim, the period between when I was dating Amber, and then when I then then when I wasn't. The transition and how yeah. much it changed it was. Oh man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, well, it's because drastic. then. Well, the the one the thing I noticed, Nate was like, "Oh yeah," because you started talking and all that. Blah, blah. I said, "No, dude, my bed wasn't made anymore." My bed was never made after we broke up. <laughs> oh, fucking me. No, Let's that go. is true. But I am happy to see that the, the introduction of the new girlfriend didn't bring back the old Brandon. It's nice yeah, to see. Yeah, she's not in the background of every video. Oh, wait, no, she doesn't live with you yet, so we'll have to see. No, dude. Well, well see. we're going to get a two-bed because she actually works. So we're going to get nice. a two-bed, and one room will be... Um, 
office slash her her arts and crafts area, and then the bedroom will be the bedroom. So that'll probably be around May, which is both of our birthdays. So well, that'll work. It's my birthday too. We all have birthdays in May. Mine's in April. And, well, you don't count. May it doesn't matter. Oh. Hey, May, May. Hey, May, May, May. Yeah, dude, it's okay. But... The best day is May fourth. Now it's May eighth. No, it's her May fourth. Birthday her birthday's the fifth. Mine's the tenth. No, it's the fourth because it's May the fourth be with you. It's Star Wars Day. <sighs> yes, but that's just out of coincidence. Yeah, I dude. suppose, Corey. I must say that with that blue mic, it sounds a lot better. Does it? Yeah, you sound. You have more of a, a depth studio quality to your voice. Oh. So that works out pretty well. No, dude. That's Telling fantastic. You. No, dude. You're terrible. <laughs> no. Yeah, dude. I do sound like shit still. That's all right. Yeah, you're still getting over the illness. What about gaming? I don't even see you on the WoW anymore. The oh, me? Wow. No. You or Corey hasn't. Corey hasn't touched it since like no the first way. couple nights. Yeah, dude. What are you doing? Or I think he. I think he finally had got to 100 and then just kind of. No, yeah. I was fucking around with it for a bit, doing the dungeons and stuff, and I don't know. It just didn't really sink in. Right. I think for me, uh, it was the fact that my schedule changed and I'm going to have Fridays and Saturdays off now, so I'm not going to be able to raid with the raid team that I helped form. Uh, so they're going to... We were talking about moving it to Friday, Saturday, but there were too many people that weren't going to be able to make Friday, Saturday, so I figured instead of disassembling and rebuilding the whole team, yeah. I told them just to kind of keep it together because we had a couple melee DPS in the group that had that were melee by off spec and they were main tank or main spec tanks so i was like well i'm obviously an easy replace so you know i'll back yeah. out you guys take the team but so yeah, i haven't really been feeling it i've been reading the past couple of weeks well you know gamut brought up a good point when he was on last week and he's like you know i hate to say anything negative about blizzard but i'm bored oh well, i it's not quick I I'm not, I, I guess I'm bored because High Mall was fun for the first few weeks figuring out the fights, but one, my raid schedule was really late and it started to mess with work, so right. that's one reason. But I get really bored in the rinse repeat phase of raiding. Yeah, progression raiding like, is fun, but it's just, it's. No, progression, progression rating is awesome. Like when we first down Imperator on normal and then did heroic, I was like, oh yeah, this is so cool. This is awesome. And then I killed like a couple bosses in Mythic. Oh, this is cool too, but. Then it's like, oh, just farm heroic for gear. Like, this is boring. Like, it's right. just rinse repeat every week for gear. Right. No, I could totally understand that. I, that's, that's always been. I mean, it'll I get there. And when Black Rock comes out in February, that'll be cool. Yeah. But Black Rock will be, I'm ready for Black Rock. I think a lot of it's going to be scheduling. I mean, I like the Friday night, Saturday night off. You know, it gives me weekends off. It, it opened up the schedule for podcasting a little bit and lets me kind of spend some time with the wife at night. Uh, on the weekends, but um, it's, like I said, it, it just kind of cut into wow. And on the other hand, I've been so distracted by other things. Like, I've been, like, really into Dragon Age Inquisition, and I'm completely huh. loving it. Huh. Yeah, and that's, like, fun. that's basically huh. a single-player MMO. I mean, you've got your crafting, you've got your gathering, you've got all these little side quests. Every time you log in, your your herbs and your ore respawn, and things that you have to combat with respawn... There are there's a mission table that gives you missions for your your followers and people that are with you, and that act that's in real time. So if you have a mission that like takes a half hour, you could get off the game for a half hour and get back in, and, and that's real time that continues to go. Mm -hmm. But I'm very much enjoying that, and I'm enjoying the depth of that. I mean, I'm like six and a half hours in, and I'm still in the first zone. So yeah, it's fucking beautiful. It is so beautiful. It really is. We got to get Brandon to get it. Yes. You can buy it for me. There's a and there's a multiplayer too, so you can do four player co op. Okay, let's talk about multiplayer real quick. I just gave that a whole shot and played it till like five fucking o'clock this morning <laughs> with my brother. Like <laughs> no joke, it's it's Dragon pretty good. Dragon Age? Yeah, yeah, Dragon Age. There's four player co op. It's like okay, imagine the you know how Diablo has a uh, the four player bounty bounty mode kind of deal. Right. Like where you do the bounties and you go off and you just do a mission and go kill something and then that's it. Right. And you yeah, go back to so. town and yeah. do something else. It's kind of yeah. like that, but it'll set you up in different areas and like dungeons and be like, go do this mission. And then it'll change a little bit each time. Like it'll take you to different areas wherever it is. So it's like multiplayer side questing. Yeah. And you're just going around picking up gold constantly so you can get chests. If, if you played the Mass Effect uh, 
multiplayer, or Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, it's like that, where you, like, get money for chests, and then in those chests are new equipment, and then potions, and gear, so you can level your guy up. Right. Pretty sweet. Well, that's and cool. the whole crafting system's still there, too, so you can make your own shit. Right. Yeah, but Origin, so, you know. There's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with Origin. No, there's nothing wrong with Origins. I'll go back and play that. No, I, I no. He means Origin that you have to run it on PC. You have to run it through Origin because it's an EA oh. title. PlayStation don't have to deal with that bullshit. Yeah, cabbage, cabbage, full cabbage. Nice, yeah, dude. nice. Yeah, dude. It's fun though, and a lot of people have been playing online. Like we got paired up like five minutes, even in like at like five a.m. It was just instant, instant nice. people. Fucking, did you, did either of you two ever play the Heroes of Might and Magic games? Yeah. I played like, some of the ones, older like the ones. Turn, turn by turn Yes, ones? the, the, tur- the turn. The top the, down? Where you yes, like, yes, 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 yes. Yes. So, so good. D- like the old ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I guess you didn't see it. They're doing HD remake of three. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Which is the most popular one. Yeah, it comes out in a couple of weeks on the... Steam. That's good. Heroes of, right, Heroes of Might and right. Magic 3 HD edition comes out the two weeks and three days that seems to kind of be the thing going on because what i saw on steam that i'm pretty excited about is they're doing the hd remake of the original resident evil and that's coming yeah, out I january saw, 20th I, saw that and just, I don't care so. not a not an re fan no not the original i like four but, but the original was the bad. best i don't like it well, it's, it's a good, it's a good game for what it is well Obviously. see and, and it's funny is with four that was actually when Resident Evil started to drift off for me because that's when it became less of a survival horror and more of a, hey, we're going to make sure you have mountains of ammo, just mow all the zombies down. Like, some of my favorite things to do in Resident Evil was getting, like, the... Because um, you, you got graded on your, uh, on your finish and the grade was depending on how many times you saved it. And um, I still remember one of the most fun nights I've, I ever had on a PlayStation 1 was getting through the origi- original Resident Evil, not saving it once, and taking down Tyrant, and you know using as little ammo as possible, and different elements like that, and that was a lot of fun for me. And two kind of had that a little bit, as well as three, and then mm-hmm. when you got into Code Veronica, it became a little bit more action arcadey, and then yeah. once you got into four. That's all it was. I mean, I love the Gears of War view perspective. I love the fact that it's like that over-the-shoulder third person, and I think that mm. view element works well for it. I just wish they kept the survival horror. Cause there's the- I thought 4, they did, kept it fine. It had some it had some horror aspects in there that was pretty creepy and shit, but then there was fucking uh, there was a lot of funny shit in there, too, like that midget dude that you fight. Right. Pretty- yeah, I mean, it was, it was a fun game, and I even remember... Uh, I don't remember who was it with you. El Gigante? Come on, man. That thing, first thing in that, you're just like, oh, shit. I was playing, because I actually have five on Steam, and there was somebody that I was playing the hell out of with with that co-op multiplayer, and I forget who it was. This was back it's actually fun around when it came out. Yeah, the multiplayer was cool. Six I never even bothered with. Uh, no. It just it got such horrible reviews. Um, it's just, it was stupid. If anything, the fact that the the way they designed the six looked like a guy blowing a giraffe that was more popular than the game itself <laughs> like there was this meme going around for the longest time where they outline the yeah uh, dude who's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that that got more positive attention than the game itself <laughs> so That's yeah and i mean spoiler alert in 5 they killed wesker and you can't kill wesker like he is resident evil so he's such a, a pivotal character. It took freaking like the whole game to kill him, though. It did. So. It was th- that was probably one of the coolest things about five is that final battle in the volcano and the helicopter. That yeah, was probably was a little bit extreme. That was one of the most epic Resident Evil fights. But yeah, that was rough. But it was, it was still cool. Too. Running around trying not get killed by his like giant saw shit that's just going nuts. Right. Yeah, I remember that. It was it was a pretty nutty fight. Hey, so mm-hmm. you you have Dragon Age on your PS4. How is the remote play on the Vita? Oh my god, I'm playing it all the time. Like it's seamless. Seriously, like there's no delay. The back the back touch buttons are a little bit awkward to get used to because this is like L2, R2, and then L3 and R3. Right. So it's a little bit weird, but. It's it's still it's seamless, and then the you know how the PS4 controller has the touchpad. You just touch the screen for the right. touchpad. 
Well, that's so cool. you can do the top down and move around like that. Nice. Basically. Yeah, I'm still trying to get used to that the the tactical camera because I spent so much time on Origins, and I never played two. So, like with Origins, I I think one of the things I miss the most in Inquisition is the fact that on the PC in Origins I could hold Tab and it would highlight everything that's interactable in your current view space. So mm-hmm. any doors, any treasure chest, stuff like that. So they they have that element a little bit in Inquisition with the the pulsing search feature, but the that's range really annoying though it, it is to have to constantly hit it. And I think you know we we discussed when we were on the phone how you know it being forces on, you to search. Yeah, but being on PC, you know, I can I can macro the V key into the W key so it pulses while I'm walking, you know, which yeah. is a convenient little feature. I don't know what uh what key or what button on the controller is mapped. It's for on the Vita, it's like back here, so I'm just like. <laughs> See, so that I mean that might not be so bad. I always found that touchpad on the Vita to be a little inconvenient for me. Uh, it's just, not actually bad. I think it's it's pretty responsive actually. Well, it's I not I, to me. It's too responsive. If anything, because like. I because I have large oh, hands. You want to rest your fingers back there, right? Exactly uh, because those yeah. little nubs on the side and back, like where they give you to rest your fingers, that's mm-hmm. very uncomfortable for me. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really have anywhere to hang your fingers. I, no, I just kind of dangle some down. My own right. two fingers. No, I mean, I I could see that. I have a feeling though, if they come out with a third iteration of the Vita, that we might see that back touchpad disappear a little bit. Uh, especially now with the integration of ps4 and you know how prominent the l2 r2 and l3 r3 are in a lot of games mm -hmm. for people that aren't used to a rear touchpad it could come off being not the most convenient thing in the world no of course it's not going to be convenient nobody's used to a back touchpad right that's new yeah i don't even think i mean are there even any mobile devices I mean, I, I do all iOS, but are there any Android devices that have a rear touchpad? A lot of touchpads. I'm, Some of the LG phones have their buttons on the back. Oh, like okay. Like, like on the LG like phones, this the buttons one? would be here. Yeah. 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 Right. Some sweet buttons. I don't know. I fucking hate those phones. I like it. Nice. You gotta you gotta fucking t- unlock the screen, like double tap it. Ugh. Oh really? That's all you do though. It's all you just, you just double tap it. Do, do. That's it. That's fine. I it's don't terrible. Care. It's terrible. It's, it's probably one of those things like when when uh iOS came out with the thumbprint scanner, that was a little annoying at first, but now with the iPhone six it's it's a higher quality one and it's more efficient. So I mean it's not bad. You just take your phone out of your pocket, hold your thumb there and your phone unlocks. So and now they've opened it up a little bit too, so other apps can use it. So like I don't have to type in my password to Amazon. If I'm using the Amazon app, it ties in with the fingerprint scanner. So, oh great! So wow, somebody, all somebody's so gonna have cool. to do is just take you, kill you, take your phone, and then just no, actually the just steal your the, thumb. the scanner like, on it. The scanner on it is advanced to the point where if it doesn't detect a pulse, it won't unlock. <laughs> so if somebody well, if somebody There's takes your security, finger, right? so somebody can't think take. Of, your, think about the process that they used to test that. <laughs> yeah. Well, all they'd have to do is just, oh well, yeah, I guess lop somebody's thumb off. <laughs> <laughs> but go to a mortuary. Hey, can I borrow this dead guy? No, real quick? no, because then uh, how would it be the same thumb? Well, you could fake a thumbprint pretty easily. Oh, I shouldn't yeah, say no, pretty easily. You're a you're a multi. Get registered pulse wise. Yeah, no, I don't know. We'll do some research on how they tested. I'll give that. them a jolt first. Be like, eh, hey, their go. phones are made by child migrant workers. They have plenty of them around to lop a couple. Well, then they lose workers, I guess. I think you meant to say designed. Huh? You meant to say designed by, not made by. No, they're assembled by. <laughs> they're not designed by child migrant workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that's what I meant. They're assembled by them. They're made by no, them. Oh no, no, no! What's going on? You and your My iOS hate. Breaking. No, no, I clean. No, no, Mr. Superman, no here. Yeah, I don't know. I've been kind of bored with WoW too. See, it's just that I jumped around game to game. It's that garrison maintenance phase, dude. Yeah, that's what I didn't like the garrisons because I felt like they like clashed the plans and jerked them off. No, I like them a lot, but it's. When you when you do a lot of alts and you want to keep up, it gets really boring. Well, you were listening to uh, the Blizzard Hour Friday night, and 
when we talked about how they mentioned that they realize that garrisons are very, very cumbersome and overwhelming for people that are altors. Yeah, we'll so, wait and see what they yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, I still, and I mentioned it on the show Friday night, that I would love to see a mobile feature, but I don't think no, they're going to do it. No, no, no. Why? Then it is Clash of Clans. Oh, wow. Just keep it on the damn computer. The auction house is one thing. Leave it at that. Yeah, fair enough. Just keep leave it at that. Plus, if they did that on the phone, it'd be so easy to automate and just farm. And then you'd have the return of bots, and then they'd have to implement some way to block botting. Uh... Yeah, fair enough. Hey, so I kind of want your guys' opinion. Um... Yes, you suck. <laughs> uh... Next subject. Oh, really quick. First off, for our <laughs> listeners that aren't aware, we do have a new show that debuted on the network Friday night. It's called The Blizzard Hour. It's myself, Gamut the Hunter, and Corey's little brother, Eric. And that yeah. is going to be live on our network Friday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So come in, hang out. We got a lot of positive feedback for episode one, and it was a lot of fun to record. So we'll be bringing that every Friday night. Um, now that the little spot is done, um, I wanted your guys' opinion on something that we had talked about on that show, which is the implementation of the purchasable and sellable game time token. How do you guys care. feel about that? That's why, why for, should, like, people why that should, are in school and have no jobs. That makes or, sense for them. Or why should Blizzard not just go ahead and take that market to themselves? Well, I think it's going gonna to happen regardless, and it's been happening, happening regardless. People have been paying gold for time and, sell, you know, spending money to get gold. It's either way, why should Blizzard not just... I, I hate to say I hate to say knuckle under, but why should they not just go ahead and do it themselves and make the money for them? Right. Yeah. Fair enough. The, I mean, like the, the money's being generated one way or another. It's just whether or not Blizzard is getting it. Correct. Yeah. I like. I mean, it's. I think that was my my only worry is that was their mentality with the auction house in Diablo three as well, is that oh well people are gonna sell rare items so why don't we just get a market in that and look what happened to Diablo three because of that. So, I mean, I, I like the right, idea. But that, was, that was an untested method. Right. This is this proven to work. This, is, this has already happened. Right. No, I mean, I like it, and I would be a little bit more hesitant about it if they were, like, if you were able to buy X amount of gold. But where it's gold that's already in the economy, I don't think it's an issue. So, but we'll see well, how it hey, rolls people out. Are gonna, people are going to continue to buy gold, too, anyway. Like, that's not going to go away either. Like, right. If someone has money and they want gold... They're gonna, They're get, gonna get it. It's that easy, right? Mm -hmm. Very true. Well, we'll there, see how it plays out. There are out. enough sites out there that sell it. There are enough people, like even between friends, you'd be like, "Hey, Nate, I'll give you twenty bucks. You give me like thirty k." Right. Oh, okay. Cool. And then that's it. Like it's not. It's against the T's and C's, but it's not like it doesn't happen. Like that shit happens all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I don't. I I don't have a problem with that. I don't see why Blizzard shouldn't just say, "Oh, okay. Well, you know, we." Why not, right? Like, it's going to happen anyway. Right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Eskimo Corey over there agrees. So then they can just bring in that much more more money. Not like they need it. Did you guys see... Uh, it's it's rumored, but Overwatch beta may release Q4. Oh. Rumored. Oh. Mill. Also, I didn't confirm and go back and look at it but the overwatch trademark or something of that nature got suspended so possible name change yeah because there's a uh, oh, really? there's an overwatch i actually just put it in the show notes for blizzard hour so thanks asshole <laughs> Get um so it's the only that's the only conflict with running the blizzard show is that we all play blizzard games so it's there's gonna be a lot of repeat information Get right. but anyway um don't state the obvious let's just keep going no so what so what it is <laughs> is there's a um, there's a mobile app called Overwatch, which I guess uses GPS, and it tracks. It basically gives you like a first person shooter esque mini map for playing paintball, airsoft, laser tag, but it just sounds like something gimmicky to me. Like, and I, are they going to? If if it, I mean, obviously there's a legal issue, and if you did it first, you did it first. That's whatever. But it's going to come to an issue where Blizzard Blizzard's going to release a game, and it's going to be immensely popular. So they put all this time and all this investment into Overwatch and making it such a huge deal at BlizzCon 2014. 
It's an easy to remember title. It's simple, but it's not generic almost. And now they might have to change it for this app. That's probably going to be a fad and will probably die off in two months. Can't they just pay them off the rise? For so that they, rate? yeah, they either pay them off or they deal. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're blizzard. They have a fucking, right. Money. Well, they're blizzard Activision. So they have a boatload of money. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, cool. they've got WoW's money and they've got Call of Duty's money. So they've got, pl- I, I, I guess, Destiny's money too. Because even though it's, yeah, it's still made a shitload of money. Um, so, yeah, they have all this money to deal with. So I'm sure if they want to keep the name bad enough, then. Right, you, pay, you, you okay. pay for it or you deal. Right. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Of course it makes sense. But speaking of upcoming things, uh, have you been paying attention to Hatred on Steam? Brandon? I saw I got greenlit. Yeah. Hooray. Beyond that, I beyond that I didn't look. I did notice on the green lap page that there's they, there's mention of the word story and something else to that effect. I mean, right. Well, I mean, there's there's still a story. I mean, even if the story is No, as, there wasn't supposed to be a story, dude. Well, even if the story is as bland as this is a suicidal sociopath. What was like it? that's still a story. Oh, let me pause this trailer. Um, discovering the plot evolve the plot evolving. Right. Uh, mad journey into the antagonist of one isometric shooter, best features of its kind. You know what plot? You know what plot? I would be totally okay with. I want the plot to be the fact that as you play the game more, you find out that he was actually paid for to do that by the liberal the government exactly by the liberal party to forward their agenda for gun control all right i'm leaving the skype call <laughs> i want that storyline oh, leaving the call <laughs> goodbye <laughs> goodbye boys it's been fun what you don't want some political story in there but they're talking about multiplayer they're talking about high scores so um, that ruins the artistic pull that it was once striving for. It's, it's the veil of legitimacy that Brandon didn't want the game to have. Well, it's, I, th- I don't know. Maybe they're going to water it down a little, which is kind of silly. But I don't know. It just says the plot. So I guess we'll see. Right. I want to believe in them, but uh, I don't know. I just man. want one of the badass looking T-shirts that you get for pre-ordering it. Oh, I saw that. Aren't those cool? Yeah, are they pretty, cool? What do they look like? What are they they're like? actually what pretty sweet. sweet. They say hatred in the hatred font on the front, and they're obviously just black T-shirts. And on the back, there was a little catchphrase. That I forget what it was. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it was either. Damn it. Damn you guys. Anyway. But they were cool. And I think they're going to the first X amount of pre-orders once the pre-orders go live. But we don't have a price yet. We don't have a pre-order date yet. Dude, it's $30. Calling it. Yeah, probably twenty nine ninety nine. Maybe even nineteen, but I'm guessing with the publicity, they could probably even go thirty nine ninety nine and be safe. Dude, they could, but I'm I'm guess I'm gonna I'm gonna guess twenty nine. I'm gonna right. bet twenty nine. Yeah, if they can get away with charging twenty nine ninety nine for a broken game like DayZ, then I'm pretty sure that they can charge twenty nine ninety nine for for hatred. Yeah, dude. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. But yeah, no, that'll yeah. be cool and I um I'm sure I'll get it if anything just to support them. We'll see how long I actually play it for. Yeah, I don't I don't even know. I'm, I'm sure I'll get it, but right. I haven't been buying games recently anyway because I haven't been playing anything else. Right. I always look at my Steam line. I'm always like, oh wow, so boring. I need to take a break. What am I gonna do? I just gaze at my Steam library. Oh, nothing sounds fun. I guess I'm just go sit on WoW. Right. <laughs> There's like 200 games here. What should I pick? Uh... Dude, it's the it's the con, it's the fucking it, it always happens. It's like, oh, you, I'm so bored. What do I want to do? And then all of a sudden, sound fun. All of a sudden, sound funny. Ah, this doesn't sound fun. Fuck that. This is not fun. It's because Wow is comfortable. Wow is the ex girlfriend that you always call on a lonely night. Yeah, but I've never called an ex girlfriend ever. Um, can't say I have either. They usually called me. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Think... Mr. Popular over there. Oh, those man. those bitches oh, yeah, got me on yeah, speed yeah. dial. Yeah, I put the yeah. poll out and reel it in. I don't go out and do shit. I see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I see what you did there. Yeah. We should have waited to talk about Dragon Age at the end of the show because now Corey is nose deep into it. Oh, that's fine. I'm still here. Uh, did you guys um? Did you guys pay attention to any of the the CES stuff 
this past week. Oh yeah, CES happened. Uh, no, <laughs> there was a. Um, oh, it's, 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 it's all. It's all. Everything I've seen is so much wearable tech stuff, dude. There's a lot of that coming. Yeah, I'm still excited for the Apple Watch, but um, no, the thing that caught my eye was the 3D printer that prints food. Did you see the? Uh, did you see the printed pizza? What kind of food? They though, printed like... a pizza. And from what the guys at IGN say, it was delicious. Whether or not it looked like legitimate pizza, from what I hear, it just kind of looked like pepperoni pizza, or just like cheese pizza. It was a pepperoni pizza, so it was. They do the pepperoni. It it, it's all printed. It's all food processing. So I assume. I mean, I can't imagine. Not that a real pizza is good for you. Yeah, I can't imagine it's overly healthy. No, doesn't seem right. Well, because your diet is very, very health conscious. But it caught my eye because I'm actually looking to get um, one of those. Remember, remember, you went out on a limb recently, and you had a burger with yellow cheese. <laughs> but no, yellow but yellow cheese. But the three D that was a that was a big step. But the three D printer caught my eye because I've actually been looking at getting one of the Cube Pro three D printers. Dude, I want one so bad. I know, aren't they? Well, the cute, the one I was looking at, I think it was retails at two grand. Um, uh, and it does, yeah. it's got a uh, 10 inch by 10 inch by like 9.9 inch printing area. So, Did you see the frost morn that was printed? That's by what really makes me want to get one. <laughs> they had the frost morn, they had the doom hammer and it's you cool. Know, they released the pattern for free. Like it's floating on the internet. Yeah. There, well, there's a website. I have it bookmarked, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's a bunch of 3d designed stuff that you can download for free. There are a lot that are free, but then there are some that you have to pay for. But it'd be cool. You can like design your own meeples and your own like everything and just make your own little board games. Or, you know, if you have board games, like if you have kids, then you can print little plastic figures that may look like them. So they have themselves as a figure. You can have 3D printed Buddha Batman. Look at Cor- exactly look at Corey. Look at Corey's video feed. It's 3D this printed is a 3D Buddha. 3D printed Voodoo Bat, uh, little uh, Voodoo, Voodoo Bat. It's a Buddha Batman. Nice. Voodoo Batman. I was and like, wait so a much s- detail. I was like, wait a second. It's a fat Batman. And then I saw the belly was exposed, and I'm like, oh, it's a Buddha Batman. Nice. <laughs> that rocks. Mm-hmm. Rub- I-, I love him. So when you rub his belly, does the bat signal go off? <laughs> That'd be even better. Oh, that would be better. <laughs> 3D printing. That'll take some time. Yeah. Hershey's got an awesome one that prints chocolate now. They have it up on their website. And uh, it's just the amount. Why do they need one that prints chocolate? It's the, if they do the freaking Hershey's Kisses, all it is is just like chocolate paste, and they just go. Right, but it, but <laughs> no, check out. I linked the video on Facebook, but check out. Um, this was probably like a week and a half ago. Check out the, the look, because they did a Hershey's Kiss, but it was hollowed mm-hmm. and spiral. Like, it looked really cool, and it prints it layer by layer. But right now, the technology is just behind to the point where, like, it took 25 minutes to print a, a hollow Hershey's Kiss. Wow, that's so worth it. So, but it's just, it's one of those things where it's really cool, and it will advance. But, you know, yeah, you could yeah, order you could order custom chocolate bra- chocolate bars that are designed with, like, photos, or, like, if you um if you want to order custom chocolates for a wedding or a birthday party or something like that. So, but... Once the technology gets there, it'll be cool. It's just, it's another little gadget for people that have extra money to blow. Did you see the data mine stuff for patch 6.1? I haven't looked at that yet, no. Oh, it's so much shit, data mine. The legendary follower. Harrison Jones is a follower. That'll be cool. Yeah, dude. Oh. I, uh... uh I will say I'm excited for the. I, I will say I'm excited for the Twitter integration into the UI. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. So that'll be cool. Yeah, but who cares? People who use Twitter. Yeah. Oh, so Brandon. Who cares? Brandon, did I tell you that I got Evil Within? And I've been playing it. Is it good? It, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. Wait, now hold on a second, because you had nice things to say about it on last week's episode. Right, but t- now he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's there's things that I want in a horror game, and this one doesn't really have it. It, and it's too like they they try and like make it such a confusing story, and because you're like in this guy's head, and it's all his dreams and shit, so you're just jumping from place to place all the fucking time. You're in one room, and then you're in the fucking Mojave Desert, and you're like, the fuck's going on? 
Right. But they make it so played out with this chapter thing. Like, the little chapter will end. It'll be like, saved to next chapter. But in each chapter, they have, like, a different bad guy that will be, like, following you throughout that chapter. Like, this dude, here's a big fucking dude with a safe on his head and a chainsaw. And then you kill him at the end of the chapter. Next chapter, here's this witch thing that chases you around. Next chapter. It's just been That's playing that the whole way. I'm glad I didn't buy that game. And it is a gore fest, like I thought. It's just blood. That's, I think I told you that. Isn't that's that just a typical horror game, though? Just like a gore fest? Yeah, but no. there's, there's some there's some horror that have no gore at all and that they're scared and shit. Right, but see... Because I think, they're actually good. Right, but I think that's the difference there. It's like, because you have a horror game, which is, you know, it's it's a blood fest and it's slasher and it's there's a lot of violence there's a lot of death there's a lot of gore then you have a suspense game which is something like um amnesia i would no, consider amnesia no. to be a amnesia suspense game a suspense game it's not it's a horror game you don't play them anyway do you i played amnesia i didn't find it that entertaining that's because i just got i got bored because you're just like you probably had your lights on you had some candles going you're sipping on a nice moscato oh i think i'm gonna play a nice game <laughs> Oh, yes. Mm, yeah. Mm. Honey, come watch me play this scary yes. game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you, guys. you just didn't do it right. Yeah. Apparently yeah, yeah, not. Get... Anyone who says it, like, quote unquote, wasn't scary just didn't do it well, right. Well, no, no, no. I'm not saying that it wasn't scary. It definitely or, had a. Or, or you intentionally remove yourself from it. Like, you just sit there and talk the whole time. Or just actually don't get immersed in it. Because even at the beginning, excuse me, the game calls out that it's like, you know, turn your lights off, put a headset on and right. turn it up. Right, yeah, you know, have the surround sound, have the lights out, be in, no, and I get that. And I, and I enjoy those types of games most of the time. I just didn't like that game. I did really enjoy... I mean, most of the time, how many of those games actually exist and are done well? Well, what I was going to say was I did really enjoy the uh, the Penumbra game. It's done by the same people. Yeah, that's the exact same company. Okay, well, then I enjoyed that's Penumbra, and I didn't too. enjoy they Amnesia. They did Penumbra first. But it, was also, but it was also no different than that Amnesia 2 came out, and that didn't get positive reviews at all. So they obviously... Done that, another company had a hand in that. China... China House. Oh, okay. People that did Disaster had a hand in that. Oh, all right. And I don't know. Now, I just maybe Frictional is doing Soma, which is a sci-fi. Oh yes, yeah, Soma. I, I was yes. like actually looking at that. That was good. See now, what didn't Penumbra have? Outlast. Yeah, Outlast. I heard good things about. Uh, which was which was the same vein and actually done well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I liked Outlast. The camera uh, aspect was, but my if my memory serves me well, Penumbra had weapons, and it was you. It was more of a survival no. horror shooter. You had weapons. You interacted with monsters. Not as much. Mm, but no, you more uh, more tried to uh, get away from them. There are actually a lot of, um, I guess I'll just say blog posts like dev diaries put out by the guys at Frictional about what makes horror horror and like what makes it actually good like. A bunch of violence and stuff jumping at you is cheap. Like that's just mm -hmm. that's just it's, cheap. It's an easy scare. Right. It's very easy. Like not expecting something is just not expecting something. Right. No, I I can understand scary. that kind of you know being afraid of what might be in the dark is is more mm -hmm. threatening than just constantly having shit thrown at you. Yeah. Like I can understand that. I just it's well, it's because that's why I don't like any any scary movies anymore. Is because it, everything is all done the same. I could be sitting and watching like the next great horror TM film in a theater. And I'm like, something isn't jump at me right now, and it does. Oh, right. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, that door is probably going to creak open. Okay, it did. Right. Yeah, they're very predictable. And there were not weapons in Penumbra, by the way. You had a flashlight. I thought you had like a crowbar or something. Well, there you go thinking again. You had Sometimes, a crowbar and you could use it, but you were supposed to use it for doors. Stuff, but. You did. You didn't like. Actually, there was no combat. Right. It wasn't meant to be used for combat, but you could hit him with it. I remember using the crowbar it's and just smashing shit. Gonna, it's right. not gonna, it's Maybe it was just the story that, like, because obviously a game like that where 
it's all about the story immersion. It's just a little different because you've got the whole. It's like the Chernobyl esque. Right. Yeah. You were up in the number was more and... Chernobyl. Right. Maybe that just caught me more than because Amnesia, you were in like what, like an old castle or an yeah, old mansion? Castle. Like castle. Yeah, yeah. It tells the story of like the the uh, the archaeological expedition and all that. Mm-hmm. What right. happened to this town? Yeah. Maybe I was just attracted more to the lore of of Penumbra than yeah. Amnesia. Yeah. I mean, I again, a game like that where it's purely all lore because there is no interaction. You know, if, if it's if you don't like the lore, then it's kind of like reading a book. There's no interaction at all. You are reading a story. So if that story doesn't catch you, even if it's an amazing book, if you don't like it, you're probably not going to read it. And that doesn't mean it's a yeah. bad book. It just means it's not your flavor. Yeah, it's like you're trying to compare Fallout 3 and a uh, Stalker. Right. Yeah, two completely different if you games. Ever, they're like two similar games and totally same aspects, but to- completely different. Right. No, I would get that. Speaking of Fallout, not 3, but Fallout, going back to the original when it was top down, have either of you played Wasteland 2 yet? No, I've been thinking no, about it because I love isymmetric games. And yeah. That, yeah, because no, I was really, I was really disappointed when, when 3 or when Fallout 3 became a first person shooter. I was disappointed that they didn't stick with the strategic gameplay of it. And... Dude, Shadowrun Returns was really cheap on the winter sale at one point, I think. I'm trying to remember what I paid for it. I got it for like four ninety nine sometime last year. Oh yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, dude. I haven't even played it yet. <laughs> I picked up um there was a Disney sale that because they had their Lego sale, but the oh, Lego boy. the Lego sale encompasses all the Lego games except for the Disney licensed ones. But they finally had a Lego sale, which encompassed the Pirates of the Caribbean game, the Star Wars games. And the Indiana Jones game. So I picked up the rest of those. So I finally have all the Lego titles. But it's just, those are one of those games where I'll hop in, I'll play it for a half hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll hop back out. Right. So, but they're, they're fun. They're just, they're all, they're all kind of the same. The only one I don't have is the new Lego Batman 3. I haven't got that one yet. But I did finally see the Lego movie. And my God. Everything is awesome. (laughs) Is that not one of the greatest movies ever? Everything is cool. And I'm really excited for the standalone Lego Batman movie because that'll be really cool. I think it's like 27. It's like 2017 though, so it's still a ways away. But everything is awesome when you're part of a team. (laughs) Uh, Have you guys seen any any newer movies lately? I watched The Hobbit. Did you guys watch Part Three of The Hobbit? No, I haven't seen any of them yet. I saw it over freaking winter break at this uh, awesome. It wasn't an IMAX, but it was an uh, in the IMAX theater. It was weird, but it had like super electric reclined leather seat chairs with like swivel tables that go across when you're laying back. Nice. It's the right. best movie theater ever. But no, that movie's insane. Is it good? Great. I don't know, dude. It was okay. The ending kind of got me when he was looking at the dude, but I don't, I'm not gonna. Yeah, spoil but then, it, it, then at the end, it's just like <coughs> go watch Fellowship now. Right yep. now, at, like, and now we're following back up. So now yeah. that all three are out, and now that I presume both of you have seen all three, because I I haven't seen any of them. So, oh, well, that's your own fault, man. It just it's it's just What's one of those things. But I don't know what your deal is. It w- was it necessary to break a book up into three movies? I don't know. the The third one had a lot of stylized action for the sake of stylized action. Right. I think they probably could have squeezed it into two. I think they could have taken more little details out of the book instead. Well, uh, they added a lot of stuff throughout the three movies. They added a lot that actually wasn't in the the book. Yeah, right? but then there was a lot of stuff in the book that, that wasn't right. Right, because I know that they added like Legolas, and I think Frodo was even in it at one point, wasn't he? Because uh, they not as like a character, only like a flash. Back or something. Or like at the forward. very beginning of the first one when they start it. Right. And at the very end of the third one. Right. No, not even. No, no yes. I didn't see him in the third one. I'm trying to think. Because at the very end, it goes back to normal time. No, it just it ends with uh him Gandalf knocking on knocking the door. On That's the right. Door. That's yeah. right. Yep. So yep, it ends right. with the basically the beginning of fellowship. Yep. Yes. It, the okay. exact beginning. Right. Now yeah, it's like it, you know, he's got the thing on his door about the party. Spoiler alert, leave now. 
Uh, he's got the thing on his door about, you know, he's throwing his birthday party, and then Gandalf knocks on the door. He's like, bye -bye. Well, but what about old friends? And that's, like, verbatim, I think, the be like, right. the part of the beginning of Fellowship, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. So, yeah, I mean, Well, I and then they also make, like, spoiler alert, leave now. In, uh, <laughs> in the third one, they make, they make a straight reference to Aragorn. Towards the end, the, uh, Legolas is uh, king. I forget his name. Is talking to him. He's like, I'm not coming home because Tariel wasn't coming home, and they were like banished. He's like, Oh, blah blah. I'm not coming home. So then he's like, Well, go go to the east and find this ranger. He's the son of I forget his name, but oh, he is yeah. no ordinary ranger. He you know he goes by Strider, but his name is Aragorn. It's just like <laughs> fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> It's like go watch the movie. That's I mean, Down what is that? Fifteen throat. years pretty, old by now. Pretty much. It's, I mean, Fellowship still. It's like, old. Those, it's still all good movies, but. Yeah, I mean they're great, and I have them all, and I'll probably end up picking up all three Hobbits, um, you know, on digital like or whatever. Like but uh, yeah, no, it's it. I I was a little over, but no, it's um, it's fourteen years old. It came out no one. So, I mean, I think it was probably holiday 01, and we're just kind of on the cusp of 2015, so it's probably right. like 13 years old. But, um, <sighs> man, has it been that long? Yeah, dude. That's crazy. It's like going back and, like, the original Matrix came out in 99. It's like, fuck. So I played WoW for 10 years, dude. We all have, I think. Yeah. Redonk. 10 years. Yeah, dude. Fucking Bioshock 1's pretty old at this point. I know. We're getting old. I turned 31 in three months. It's <laughs> pretty cool. It's, like, ridiculous. Okay. I'll be 24 in May. I remember being, like, 12 and playing Ultima. It's... I'm trying to plan a vacation for us for our birthday. I don't know where she go. Take her to BlizzCon. <laughs> uh, she, if we do go this year, she's going to come with me. Oh, nice. That'll be cool. I asked her. I said, you know. This I is on the her. assumption you're still together in November. No, we're gonna be together, dude. I, I promise. Corey, are we taking bets? <laughs> you can, you can TM this if you like. You can add the trademark to the top if you want, but this is different. All right. Uh, Whoa. You this, can add. You this can is add, different. TM. You can add TM if you like. It's totally it's different this time, guys. I feel it, it this time. It, She's it, not it, like all the other listen, ones. Listen, as a guy. <laughs> Who's been married? <laughs> then I dated the girl with the girl and moved in with her, and a couple little things in between, and had sex with random girls uh, time to time. <laughs> Full disclosure, spoiler alert. This is a spoiler alert for her. Is she aware of all this? Spoiler alert. She, she yes. At least most of it. Yes. Um, now, is she aware of the fact that before <laughs> you started dating her, I would get a text like every other weekend going, hey, check out the girl I'm hanging out with this weekend. I don't remember sending you any text to that effect. You would you would. Or is this the one that you went away with for the weekend a couple of times? Went away with. Didn't you go up to Charlotte? No, no. I'm just trying to I'm not trying to like call you no. out. I'm just trying no, to you align. Just don't pay enough attention. Huh? You don't pay enough attention. Probably not. That's, that's what it is. That's why you don't know what you're talking about. I got about. accused. I went, to, I went up to Charlotte the night Amber and I broke up. Right. Last last August. That was the only time I actually went up to Charlotte. Oh, okay. I thought you went with this girl a couple different times. No. Because okay. she lived in Charlotte. Right. Makes sense. But. Well, that was a weekend away for you. It was a day. It was a night. So, you know, if one night equals weekend, then. Well, you spent the night and you were there. For the next day, so that encompasses Saturday and like, Sunday. I left, I left like early afternoon. <laughs> Whatever. This is shitty radio. I don't care. <laughs> you just don't pay attention, dude. No, no. My wife was nagging me about that yesterday too. She said I don't pay attention enough. She goes, "All oh, when you're," when she goes, "I need." You do. It's because all you care about is you. Shh. No, it's because if I'm gaming, you have to make sure I'm listening before you talk to me. Oh. Otherwise, it's in one ear and out the other. Right, yeah, well, when you call me, to be fair, I don't listen to most of Exactly. You See, it's just, it's, it's a vicious <laughs> Whether cycle. I'm gaming or not, it's just because <laughs> you just start talking, and I hate talking on the phone, so I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Very all nice. good. 
I'm not too worried about it. But good. That's well, we well, will. We, should, we will get well, ready well, to. Well, you shouldn't be. We will get ready to wrap up this episode of Geek Access. Um, Brandon, any any final things that you want to kind of get out? Oh man, I need to find a game that I want to play. Get Dragon Age. Buy it for me. Oh, no. I'd say I'd get it for you for your birthday, but it'll be old news by then. Well, could be early. Could be early. <laughs> I'll play it. That's my stipulation. You know what? I'm going to start playing Swift Tour again. No, you're fucking not. Peace out, guys. <laughs> so logging good. on. I'm logging on to Trigant to level my sniper. <laughs> Oh, it, wait, no, wait, wait, hold, hold on a Reason second. I just had, I just had a, an epiphany. Do you call him Triganth? Like, is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Because for the years, I always called you Triganth. Nope. Like Trident Gum. You were Triganth. Like it, trigonometry. You pronounced it Triganth. I, I didn't know trigonometry that. All, all these sucks. years, and I was not aware that you pronounced it Triganth. No one ever pronounces my names right, dude. Brandon Leenow. No one, even in real, in who, real life, who is known as Johnny One Wrenches, Renicus. Where did people get wrenches? There's no <laughs> ch in there. <laughs> it's because we just look at it quickly, and then our our brain no, fills I, I, in. I think people just have very strenuous grasps on the grasps on the English language, and don't people do? They see something they don't want to think about how to pronounce it. They just say. <laughs> it's like no, me it's seeing your it. first name and not wanting. I just feel like not national. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan the Nathan or, or seeing Corey's last name right like Corey Eldride like without <laughs> look, without looking at it like people just see they don't yeah. want to think about how to pronounce so they just say they just they just they, they, say they, they say announce Eldrig a lot they, they announce the first four or five letters and then fill in the rest yes basically <laughs> and add letters I'm just like, I, I don't I don't know I don't get it but, it's all good uh, Corey final I thoughts I don't know your hat um, is still amazing, by the way. You need to wear that every episode. <laughs> I hate that. Why do you have a hat it's like really that in hot. California? I should be wearing that hat. It's because my snowboarding hat. When I go snowboarding, I wear this. Because hip and cool, dude. Yeah, and it's cold in my house, and it felt nice on my ears. See, no, and what you have to do is now you have to go get some of that, like, that just for men pepper, like the, the black and gray, and do your beard in that, and then it will just all blend together into the hat. No, that's too much. I couldn't do that. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, Netflix. Everybody should watch Fear and Loathing, and everybody should watch Snatch. And Friends. Nah. Fear and Loathing and Snatch. Come on. Those are two fantastic. Dude, Parks and Rec. Fucking season three of House of Cards in a month. I know. I'm so excited. And I like the fact that because of the way Netflix does it, every episode comes out the same day. Yeah, you just so you can just binge watch just it. Just a season release. Yeah, it's really nice. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm excited that. for that. That'll be cool. Corey, have you even watched that show yet? No. You need to watch it. You might at this point, you might as well wait till season three is out because the cliffhanger from two into three sucks, and you really want to know what's going to happen next. Gotcha. So yeah, when see, it's supposed to be coming out in sometime in February. It's like so. the twenty. Have you guys seen Let's Birthday see. Boys? No. The end of February. Is no. it the end of February? All right. Yeah, dude, it's like the twenty. And then we get what? Orange is the new black is like March, right? I don't care about that. Game of Thrones is in April, and I don't want to wait that long. Oh, okay. You don't watch Orange is the New Black? No, dude, I don't care about. It's somebody. actually pretty yeah. good. It is a good show, and it, even if you don't care about the storyline, it's basically lesbian porn. <laughs> yeah, see, I've, I'm not even a big. Le- I'm not even. A, I don't care about lesbian porn. <laughs> I, anyway, I shake my he, head. He doesn't even say. know how to answer that. <laughs> I he's shake like, my I've head. I've been jerking off the lesbian porn since I was ten. <laughs> <laughs> lesbian porn's fucking boring, dude. No, I, no, I, no I, 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 right. I, I kind it's of agree. Kind of like, it, it kind of yeah. is. You can't, you can't imagine yourself in the fantasy anywhere if there's no, I like. I, I don't, I don't do that either. Anyway, whatever. Um, when you jerk it, see, dude, my, go by yourself. <laughs> oh, dude, I just like big butts. He oh, likes okay. he likes those. I guess I guess Nate like fucking sits there so, and he's like, oh that could be me. Oh yeah, that could be me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Nate only watches POV porn. Nice. Yeah. He watches SSBBWPOV. What is porn. the SS? Look it up. 
Okay. Hashtag twerkman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this quickly went downhill. Look up the SSBBW. Have well, I, fun. I know what BBW is, obviously. Have fun, dude. Anyway, all right. Uh, my final thoughts um, Dragon Age is cool, so pick it up. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, check out the Blizzard Hour Friday nights, 9 p.m., with Gamut and Eric and myself. And um, I think that's it. I don't really have a lot of final thoughts. I'm going back to work tonight after a month and a half of my son's surgery, my daughter's illness, and now the wife being on crutches. I'm off FMLA. I'm going back to work tonight for the first time I it, in like since November. So I'm not looking forward to it. Um, but I will be there. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Tough break, buddy. It is. got to work, man. It is what it is. About time you got back. Before we f- officially close out, I do want I meant to do it in the top of the show, but it just kind of exploded. Yo, hold on. I'm going to steal it from you. Shout outs to my boy Todd and shout outs to Alpha Geek for letting us join the family. Oh, there you go. What? Somebody taking uh, over. Those guys. Wait, what was the first one? <laughs> what? What was Todd. What was the first one? Shout outs to it's Todd, right? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, dude. Something like you said like like Alpha Boy something. I'm like Alpha <laughs> Alpha Boy. <laughs> Boy, oh yes. No, so we're very, very thrilled that, to be welcomed into this network. We are. It is. It is a cool feeling, and um, it's nice. It, it's nice to to be on there, and yeah. So now I'm. I'm yeah, shout outs to shout outs to shout outs, boys. <laughs> shout outs to shout outs. Um. Well, <laughs> that <laughs> being said, people is as always. You can catch the Geek Access podcast live at 5 p.m. every Sunday afternoon. You can check out our live video feed and typically our li- our new live IRC chat, though it was kind of janky today for some reason, at inkedgeekstudios.com slash live. You can check out the audio stream at alphageekradio.com on channel 2 at 5 p.m. And our live video is also streamed there as well on their video channel. Um, you can find more information about this show and other shows that we do at inkedgeekstudios.com. You can hop in there. Drop a comment, say hello, subscribe. Um, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash inkedgeekstudios. On Twitter, we are at iGeekStudios for the studio, at IG underscore geek access for the show. Brandon is at John One Renicus. Corey is at IG underscore Audio King, and I am at IG underscore Nate Ward. So pop in, follow us, say hello, and you can get any great news updates on there. I do want to give another big thank you to our patrons for helping support the studio and the show and keep us, keeping us going. Um, and yes, I said shout out this time, not shit out like at the top of the show. <laughs> um, you can find more information about our Patreon at patreon.com slash IG studios. Hop in there, check it out. We've got some cool little rewards in there. Um, you know, a dollar a month. 50 cents a month, whatever. Uh, if you like the show and you want to give us some support, we do appreciate it immensely. So, yeah. I um, got off to my Patreon users. What's that? On Patreon. Yeah, dude, secret reward. Corey will do stuff. Corey will do stuff for you. Yeah. Your your choice, you do stuff. <laughs> What's the moose stuff? Corey, Corey's well, going to have his private... Well, I can stand here chewing grass. Corey's gonna be the or new you web. Can put peanut butter on your body anywhere in your body. And I'll lick it off. Corey's gonna be the IG Studios webcam girl. The only stipulation <laughs> is he has to keep the hat on. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. That might be nice though. I don't know. Well, gentlemen. That being said. Did you? Oh my. Okay. What? I'll talk about it later. Nothing. All right. Later. Are you sure? Yep. You are good? Positive. Just fucking say it. All right. That being Dude, said, uh, the picture you put for me in the cast and crew page. <laughs> you're such a shitter. Oh. Is it good? I haven't seen it's, it. It's that one. That. Remember a while back when his camera froze and I got that really goofy ass screenshot of his photo. Oh, it's that yes. one. Well, he complained uh-huh. that he didn't want his Geek Squad one up there anymore. So. No, I just felt like changing it. Well, I changed cool. it for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do it myself. There you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> for Brandon, for Corey, and for myself, thanks for listening, everybody, and we will talk to you next week. Bye bye. Namaste. Namaste.